Now, after six months, I kind of have to admit, the iPhone 15 Pro has been the most consistent iPhone all across the board. Now, out of all the phones in the iPhone 15 series, the iPhone 15 Pro has been giving me the least amount of problems from its software, hardware, all the way down to its amazing ecosystem. It's giving me a great experience. With the iPhone 15 Pro, you have a very nice compact size. You have iOS 17 that has been running incredibly smooth. The A17 Bionic chip that can handle any power heavy app that you thought it. And it has a nice premium build quality that has been pretty durable over the past six months. And despite all of the great things that the iPhone 15 Pro had to offer, I will admit that it's not perfect. And in this video, I'll be sharing my experience with the iPhone 15 Pro to help you guys decide if it's worth buying. Now looking at the battery, the iPhone 15 Pro handled everything extremely well. I was able to get pretty heavy usage out of it since I shoot videos with my iPhone. And other than shooting videos, I'm usually checking up on my Instagram and TikTok analytics, watching YouTube videos, scrolling through Twitter, and checking up on emails throughout the day. I never had to use power saving mode since the battery was able to last me all day with no problem. And as long as I got up to six hours of on-screen time, I basically could use any power heavy app that I wanted. I was very comfortable doing whatever needed to be done on this phone and was always sure that it will last me till the end of the day. On a daily basis, I'm getting six to seven hours of on-screen time a day, ending my days on a very low percentage, but still never really feeling like I needed to cut corners to extend the battery. Charging the 15 Pro had little to no problem since I mostly charged my phone overnight. There were a few times where I forgot to charge it at night, so I charged it while I was getting ready for the day, and it was always on 80 to 100%. And then one of the best things related to the battery is that the 15 Pro has a USB-C port, and this came in extremely clutch since I'm now able to use one charger for all my devices. But besides the convenience of USB-C, the 15 Pro's battery is very close to the 15 Pro Max, making that $1,000 price tag even more convincing. So now that we've taken a look at the battery, let's get into what's been holding up really well over these past six months, the design and build quality. Now out of every phone in the market, the Pro iPhone 15s are some of the best in terms of look and feel. The arch smooth curves complemented with a boxy frame is the best in terms of aesthetic. And my favorite part is that it has the matte back that has been great at dealing with fingerprints and the matte sides that are also pretty good at deflecting fingerprints. It was also very easy to clean whenever I spill or drop my phone in something dirty. And I really wish that every phone was this practical for everyday use. Now looking at weight, the iPhone 15 Pro is definitely lighter than you would think. The titanium finish was able to balance comfort and feel. So you get pretty solid materials all around. Holding it was very easy, watching YouTube videos in landscape mode was cool, and holding it vertically felt even better. And overall, the 15 Pro's aesthetic has matched the more pricier phones, the dynamic island notch was a nice touch, but other than that, it looks the same as the previous Pro model iPhones. And now looking at display, the iPhone 15 Pro has been holding up very well, and in terms of resolution, can easily go toe to toe with the best phones in the game. The 120Hz refresh rate has yet to fail me, it's been incredibly smooth all across the board, and I have always felt like it was more sleek compared to the Galaxy and Pixel. The 15 Pro has a ceramic shield display. Yes, it is supposed to be more crack resistant, but Apple has had more problems with scratch resistance, so it would be nice if they can improve that as well. The premium look is the best attribute that this display has. The colors pop, the smoothness was apparent, and like most iPhones, it was visually stunning. Now going deeper into the display, the brightness has improved from last year's iPhone 14 Pro. If you are outside with the 15 Pro, it can reach up to 2000 nits of peak brightness. And the biggest thing that I was able to take away was the fact that the screen was still able to pop as much as if I were inside the house, giving its premium display more continuity. Face ID is still holding up very well. And even after six months, the iPhone 15 series has had the best face ID in the game, and it's not even close. And now the last thing that I wanted to touch on when it comes to the display was just how good it looks when watching content, movies, and videos on social media. The resolution has never disappointed me in the slightest, and I'm glad that the very big display was able to enhance the experience. Now moving on to camera, the iPhone 15 Pro has been keeping up the same consistency over the past six months, and I like it. The camera software continues to push the envelope and make my photos look as realistic as possible. The selfies were top tier, different objects in different environments were able to flourish, and I'm still very happy till this day that the iPhone 15 Pro has 48 megapixels. Zoom photos are top notch as well. There aren't too many modes to choose from when compared to the Galaxy, but you can go digital zoom, which works fine if you park somewhere and you need to see the signs from far away. Selfies on the 15 Pro were among the best in the smartphone market. I love how it handles my skin tone. I love how it looks really good while adjusting little details. And I still believe that I have yet to find a phone that takes better selfies. Videos on the 15 Pro are the best in its price range. The autofocus, many different modes, impressive stabilization, and quality was very consistent, which made me want to shoot videos on it. You can shoot videos up to 4K. You can also 
also shoot videos up to 60 frames per second. You can go cinematic mode, slow mode, and editing videos was just as impressive. The stabilization was solid, pans were smooth along with brightness and contrast, and the extra smoothness was all top tier. And going deeper into video, I wanted to give you guys some of my random footage that I was able to capture on my 15 Pro. And alright you guys, that's it for my review on the iPhone 15 Pro. It's a phone that is the most trustworthy for me since it, since it has outdone every phone in the 15 series in terms of longevity. So if you are someone who loves shooting video, pictures, or you just want a premium iPhone that will last you a very long time, the iPhone 15 Pro so far is a very solid option. And let me know down in the comments, do you guys think that the iPhone 15 Pro is the best iPhone to buy in the 15 series? Peace.